I work hard to earn my pay And I saved real big today At All-American Ford Hey everyone, I'm Jason Svina, the Marketing Director for the All-American Auto Group. This is the All-American Auto Mall and Old Bridge Updates podcast. This is episode number 37. Um, I'm going to just be providing weekly updates on this episode. Uh, a lot of cool stuff came in, a lot of cool announcements from the manufacturers uh, this past week. So I'm going to be kind of quickly going through each one. Um, and you could always find more information on our Facebook pages, our website, uh, our YouTube pages. Uh, like I do with all of my podcast episodes, there's an audio component. So you could listen to this podcast wherever you listen to your podcast. Or um, I do a video version of it as well so that I could share my screen and show people who watch the video uh, what I'm kind of talking about. So let me do that now and share my screen. So this is episode 37. Last week, episode 36, I talked about my weekend with the Mustang Mach-E and how much I love that vehicle. Um, so listen to episode 36 if you're interested in the Mustang Mach-E. The episode before that, I recapped the Bronco Roadshow event, uh, which was a great event we held here in April. Um, so listen to that if you're interested to hear about the all-new full-size Bronco that's coming this summer. So to get started, um, again, just weekly updates this week. Um, happy Friday, everyone. Again, we got very cool vehicles in this past week and a couple cool announcements. So let's start with our very first Roush Ranger that we got in. So we're one of the top Roush dealers in the country. We're number one in the Northeast by far. Um, you know, Roush last year with COVID and the production issues, we really didn't get a lot of Roushes in. And this year they are finally starting to come in. Um, everything's been delayed, of course, the chip shortage, uh, inventory and production issues. I've talked about it on previous podcast episodes, but basically this Roush Ranger finally came in. Uh, it's our first one of a few that we're going to get. And this one sold almost instantly. So it came in, it was on our showroom floor, I believe one day. And one of our commercial truck customers came in, saw it, loved it, took it. Um, so within 48 hours it's sold and that's kind of how inventory is now it's going quick. Uh, this one was a beautiful velocity blue, uh, with nice black accents. You can see in the pictures for anybody watching the video and it's on our YouTube and Facebook pages, the pictures of it, uh, really Roush, I think did a really nice job with this Ranger. Uh, like I said, the black accents on the grill, the wheel, the hood has some, uh, black graphics on it or, um, the hood stripes. And then I really like in the front, the front bumper has a red uh, accent hooks for the towing hooks. I think it really pulls the entire vehicle together. Um, so this is a great Roush Ranger and we're going to be getting more of them in. Uh, we'll get a couple different colors. So look out for those. We'll be sure to post those uh, when we get those in, but Roush did a really nice job with that Ranger. The next big thing that happened this past week, just three days ago, um, the F-150 Lightning was announced. So this is Ford's all-electric version of the F-150 called the F-150 Lightning. There is going to be a live stream event from Ford Motor Company on May 19th, um, basically launching it, revealing it. I think we're going to see it for the first time, which is great. I think the reservation portal is going to open on May 19th for it. So you'll be able to reserve um, your all electric F-150 Lightning through all American Ford and Old Bridge um, and other Ford dealerships, of course, especially the ones in our auto group. So uh, check that out on May 19th, 9.30. Um, it's going to be great. So this F-150 Lightning, even Ford dealerships don't know much about it. So I've heard a little bit from Ford about it here and there. I've read some rumors from some third parties. Apparently it's going to be a very powerful engine and going to have more horsepower than the other F-150s out there, even the V8. Uh, and that's kind of similar to electric vehicles. Now, a lot of people don't realize that they're more powerful than gas engine vehicles uh, for the most part. The Teslas all have very high horsepowers. The Mustang Mach-E, like I gushed about on my last podcast episode, uh, is very powerful, very fast, very high horsepower compared to the regular Mustang. Um, so these all electric vehicles really do have a lot of power. So this one will be exciting. I know uh, Ford and like I said, those third parties, when you read about this, uh, they mentioned stuff like, you know, a full storage um, front engine compartment. So obviously there's no gas engine, 
uh, under the hood in the front. So like the Mach-E, same thing, there's gonna be actually a storage space in the front there. They're gonna have their mobile generator that was very popular with the 2021 model. Uh, that's gonna be part of the F-150 Lightning. So a lot of exciting things with this new F-150. Um, I've talked about on previous podcast episodes to the hybrid F-150, that is a 2021 model that came out this year. Um, the power boost it's called, that has been extremely popular. We can't get enough of those things. Again, the hybrid version, uh, it's gas and electric, you know, it switches automatically based on your driving. Uh, it's actually more powerful than a regular gas F-150. So that's been really powerful. I expect this F-150 Lightning to be extremely powerful. You're gonna hear later in this podcast, I'm gonna talk about the Subaru announcement of their all electric vehicle. Um, so this is the direction it's going. I've been talking about it nonstop on the podcast episodes. We're moving to all electric, whether people like it or not. The manufacturers are doing it um, and it, it's happening. So uh, it's happening a little quicker than I think a lot of people are ready for or want to happen, but it's happening. And I think the early adopters are gonna really uh, come out on top and, and be glad that they did early on. So that's the F-150 Lightning. The next one, which was pretty cool, uh, that same day that the F-150 Lightning uh, was announced, um, we had a full-size 2021 Ford Bronco here, beautiful yellow or orange, I guess they call it. Uh, it had the hard top, it was really nice. It came here for a uh, training session. So uh, unfortunately we didn't invite customers to come see it. Uh, it was just a Ford rep that brought it, uh, did some training with our staff. So our staff got to check it out, learn a little bit more about it. Again, all in anticipation that these are gonna to start to roll in pretty soon. Um, Ford keeps saying this summer, uh, barring any more setbacks or production delays. And of course, again, the chip shortage, uh, we kind of expect some of the sold units and uh, even a few stock units to start to arrive possibly next month, um, more likely June, August, I'd say. So uh, look out for that. Again, that will be posted instantly as soon as we get our first one in. And if we hear anything more, we'll also post updates about that. The, uh, the next thing that I wanted to discuss um, talk about me on the last episode gushing about the Mustang Mach-E. This one took it to a new level. So we customized a Mustang Mach-E uh, and we had it, uh, we did a full wrap package with this satin blue. Uh, I think it is one of the best looking vehicles I've ever seen in person. It's on our showroom floor currently. And every time I walk by it, I literally want to take it off of the showroom and take it home with me. Uh, I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. We worked with one of our uh, partners, um, Unusual Designs down in Freehold. They're a fantastic wrap company. Uh, so we worked with them on it. They did the full wrap. They did a protective ceramic clear coating. Um, and then uh, together our AAF Customs Body Shop and them worked together. And we also added a blackout package to it, which is blacking out the rims. Uh, and some of the emblems and tint tinting the windows. So uh, again, this, this vehicle looks just completely stunning. I am obsessed with it. Uh, I told my brother who's the general manager here that I want uh, my F-150 wrapped in this blue. So we'll see if that happens. Uh, and I think, you know, from a stock standpoint, if we had more inventory, if this wasn't, you know, during the pandemic with all the issues with the, uh, the chip shortage, I think if we had our full inventory of F-150s and Explorers, I think we would have a couple of these on our showroom right now where they're wrapped in this different color. So wrapping is something that uh, I've seen become more and more popular. Again, it's, it, it's a fairly inexpensive way to make your vehicle look extremely unique and extremely custom. Uh, it doesn't, you don't get a lease penalty for it uh, because it's considered an upgrade. So you can do it to your leased vehicles and uh, it increases your resale value. So you can do it if you financed or purchased a vehicle. And you can do it on any vehicle. Like I said, uh, the very first one we did right before the COVID pandemic started, uh, we did a uh, Explorer ST in a, in a matte black, which was stunning as well. And then, um, you know, as I've mentioned on this podcast, we've done a couple Mach-E's in the satin black and even Pete Alonzo of the New York Mets, you know, I love mentioning him. 
uh, and our deal with him. So uh, we got him into a Maki and we custom wrapped it satin black. So he's got one as well. So again, you can do it with any vehicle, any color. This is our first non-black one. So this is a blue satin one. You could get crazy. I've seen an orange satin one that Unusual Designs has done. Uh, I think it was on a different vehicle, a non-Ford. So get unique with it. Uh, if you want it, you know, engage us and, and we'll work with our partners to uh, get it done for you in a timely fashion. Uh, and I highly recommend coming to check out this uh, satin blue Mustang mach because it's unlike, you know, anything I've seen uh, in this area, at least uh, from a mach perspective. So uh, just a great vehicle. I love gushing about it. I love walking in our showroom and walking past it. Uh, I don't think it's going to be here much longer. I, I can't see this not selling uh, very quickly because, like I said, it's just a an extremely unique piece and just fantastic looking. The next one I want to talk about and the last one on the Ford side, um, and again, this is obviously called the All-American Auto Mall and Old Bridge Updates podcast, so I try my best to talk about the entire auto mall. Um, sometimes Ford just has more stuff to talk about uh, with our custom vehicles and stuff, but obviously here in our auto mall, we have Ford, Subaru, Isuzu box trucks, Jordan tow trucks, and our Blue Advantage certified used vehicles. So that's the auto mall, that's where that comes from. So the last part of Ford with this podcast episode, um, as I've mentioned before on previous podcast episodes, and we've had uh, a member of the Rutgers Athletics team join this podcast as a guest, uh, we are a proud partner of Rutgers Athletics. So we have a good partnership with them, uh, include sponsorships, advertising, and then we provide, uh, we're one of their preferred uh, fleet vendor vehicle, uh, fleet vehicle vendors, uh, I should say. So we have a very good partnership with them. Our uh, AAF Customs in-house body shop and customization shop, you know, we wanted to customize a Mustang and uh, we talked about our partnership with Rutgers and basically uh, they ran with the idea of creating a Scarlet Knight edition Mustang. So we took this Ford Mustang GT and we put a Roush performance phase two supercharger in it, which increases the horsepower to 750. So this is a very powerful, very fast custom performance vehicle. And we made a Scarlet Knight edition, which means we just ran with the color scheme of red and black. Um, our body shop and customization shop did a fantastic job. It's got a custom over the top red uh, metallic racing stripe with silver slot sides which is uh, pretty unique and not something you're gonna see on Mustangs even when they have racing stripes. So the silver really uh, amplifies the look of it, those silver sides, I really like it a lot. And then uh, custom painted uh, metallic red emblems and logos. So it, it's hard to tell in the pictures, but when you see it in person, the logos are painted with a slight red metallic tint uh, it's again, really unique. I'm one of, uh, I've never really seen this done before. Our body shop had the idea last year or the year before we did it actually on a green Mustang for a customer. And uh, we've done it a few times. We're going to do it a lot more. I don't see a lot of body shops doing it like this. So again, very unique look. When you look close, you could really notice it and it really stands out. Uh, and it's a way to kind of get that, you know, pony logo in the front. You know, we didn't want to black it out. Uh, we wanted to tie it into the red racing stripe. So this red fainted metallic look really pulls it all together. And again, it's kind of hard to tell in the pictures. You could tell in some of the close-ups of it, but uh, really unique, looks really great. I love it. Um, we also did the rims, uh, very custom rims on this uh, with red and then the red pony logo in the middle. We smoked out the tail lights. Uh, again, I've talked about it before on this podcast that I love that look, very aggressive look from the back. So that vehicle's on our showroom floor too. Actually, as of today, it's right next to that beautiful blue wrapped Mustang, uh, Maki. If anybody is around and wants to come take a look at these two, they're, they're both beautiful vehicles. So moving on, uh, this is really an auto mall update uh, across Ford, Subaru, and commercial trucks even, and all of our service departments. So uh, we are hiring. Um, you know, we are looking to expand our staff in many different departments. So sales people is one of them, uh, BDC, which is business development center. Um, we're looking for, that's basically internet sales. So those are the folks that answer the phone, answer the incoming leads that are put in from our website 
And uh, those are the ones that are email and texting back and forth with our customers. So um, we're looking for sales, BDC. We're looking for uh, technicians always. We could never have enough technicians because our service departments um, are just doing really well uh, with growth right now. And we just need more help from a technician standpoint. They're always very hard to find. So we're hiring. If you know somebody that uh, needs a job, you know, let them know, come in for an interview. We have a lot of different positions. And uh, I, I think our family owned and operated structure with me and my two brothers here in Old Bridge really uh, sets the tone and uh, really makes it a great work environment. You know, we're very willing to train right from the start. You don't necessarily need experience for some of these positions. You know, we'll train and coach you up um, and get it going. So anybody out there looking for a job, definitely consider, uh, sending in your resume through our website and then coming in for an interview. Another Subaru update we posted about, um, I'm in love with this uh, model. It's the Subaru Outback Onyx Edition XT. So it's one of the higher trim levels for the new Outback. And uh, we've had a couple of them come in here and there um, on the screen right now. And the last one we posted on social media was this white one. And basically the upper trim level just uh, has a couple cool features to it. It blacks out the logos. It's almost like one of our custom uh, AF Customs pieces. The interior is great. It's kind of two-tone leather. Uh, really, really sharp looking Outback if you're looking for a, something a little bit different. And uh, like I said, this white one has already sold that uh, we posted a week ago and we just got a, another one. Uh, it's a silver one. So with the black accents, it looks great. So we're going to post about that. And then the very last thing I want to talk about is the all new Subaru uh, Solterra. So this was announced a couple days ago. This is their all electric vehicle. This is going to be Subaru's first all electric vehicle. It is a 2023 model year, uh, just like the F-150 Lightning is going to be, I believe. And uh, they both come out next year. So uh, Subaru, it, you know, they released a kind of teaser photo of it. Uh, very little information about it so far. You could go to the Subaru.com website uh, and our website will have a page on it uh, fairly soon. And uh, basically you could start to reserve them fairly soon as well. That information will be uh, coming out and then uh, we'll see them probably middle of next year to the end of next year. So very exciting uh, from the teaser photo. You can't see much, but kind of looks like maybe it is a cross Trek size, maybe an Outback size. Uh, it's going to have, you know, all of the things you love about a Subaru. They're all wheel drive, uh, their top safety. So definitely a very exciting thing. And like I mentioned, when I talked about the F-150 Lightning, this is now happening from all manufacturers. It's not a surprise. I talked about it months ago throughout many episodes of this podcast that, you know, earlier this year, you had a lot of reports from manufacturers that they want to go, that, that they want their entire lineup to be all electric by 2030, which if you think about it is just nine years away. And you're starting to see these manufacturers deliver on this, right? Ford had the Mustang Mach-E come out last year. Um, now the F-150, it's just all of the models are gonna turn over to all electric. That's the direction they're going. That's the direction the world is going. Like it's just, it's happening. So uh, this is more proof of it. Subaru is gonna have their first model next year. And then I think each year you're gonna see more and more models uh, turn over. Right now, most of them are brand new models like the Subaru, it's a brand new one, but wouldn't shock me if this ends up replacing, you know, the Crosstrek or the Outback, or they turn the Crosstrek or the Outback into an all electric vehicle. So it's gonna happen on the Ford side, on the Subaru side and with all manufacturers and it's currently happening. So I'll continue to talk about it. It's, uh, it's where we're headed as an industry. So um, I'll 100% be talking about it uh, in more podcast episodes in the future. But uh, those are our weekly updates. Thank you for joining, and uh, I'll be back next week. Well, everyone can afford an all-American.